Have you been diligently working to grow your email list, but so far all you've gotten is crickets? Does it feel like you're doing all the things to try to get your email list subscriber up, but nothing seems to be working? If growing your email list seems like pushing a rock up a hill, have no fear, this video is gonna be your saving grace. In this video, I'm gonna share with you how you can get your email list to 1,000 subscribers or your first 1,000 subscribers as a new coach. Let's get into it. Hey, hey, Courtney Sanders here. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm a full-time business coach as well as wife and mom. I wear all the hats and do all the things. And I love really helping people take their existing knowledge and skills and turn it into income online. And one of the main ways you turn your knowledge and skills into income online is by growing your email list because your email list is gonna be your primary tool for selling your digital products or your coaching programs as an online entrepreneur. Now, I've been an online entrepreneur for over four years now and having an email list has been instrumental in growing my business. In fact, since starting my business back in 2015, I've been able to attract over 60,000 subscribers to my email list. So if you wanna know how I did it, and namely how I got over the hump and got those first 1,000 subscribers, you're in luck. Let's get into the tips. Okay, the first and most important strategy in growing your email list to those first 1,000 subscribers is making sure that you've created an irresistible lead magnet. Yes, a lot of people treat lead magnets or freebies or opt-in giveaways or whatever you wanna call them, but they treat them like just some throwaway thing that they just use to grow their email list. And if you're not familiar with what a freebie or a lead magnet or an opt-in giveaway is, those are all words to describe the same thing, it's essentially a free gift that you give to your prospective clients or people who are in your target market in exchange for them giving you their name and email address. And this allows you to be able to continue to contact them, to build up a relationship with them and really nurture them so that hopefully one day they'll be interested in whatever it is that you have to offer. Now, as I said, a lot of people treat these like a throwaway. They're just like, oh, what is some quick, you know, PDF that I could slap together or some quick little training that I could put together that's not really that helpful just to lure people into subscribing to my email list. And that is one of the worst things you wanna do. You wanna come up with something that your target market would love. In fact, you wanna come up with something that's almost something as good that they would pay for. You really want people walking away from your lead magnet like, wow, this was really amazing. I can't believe they gave this away. This was super helpful because that then sets the tone to make it easier for them to wanna buy from you later down the road. So make sure you're creating an irresistible lead magnet and I actually have a whole nother video coming up that goes into the best types of lead magnets to grow your email list. So stay tuned for that. All right, the second thing you wanna to do to grow your email list and to get to that first 1,000 subscribers is to take advantage of live virtual events. So webinars are the most popular live virtual events, but there are a multitude of live virtual events that you can do. Basically, all a live virtual event is something that you're hosting that has a, a set start time and a set end time that is really fun, really engaging, and gets people involved. So I actually grew my email list in the beginning, not just with webinars, but with email challenges. So I was kind of known for hosting very fun, but live three to five day email challenges, which really attracted a lot of people to get on my list. I personally love email challenges because my audience loves email challenges and I find that they love it because it's an opportunity for them to connect with other like-minded people that are also in my audience. They can interact with each other and it gives people something to do, something to engage in, and something to look forward to for the duration of that email challenge. So email challenges are great live events. Webinars, as I've stated, are great live events, but also live interviews. So you might wanna think about hosting a live interview or a live sit down session with someone in your community or an industry expert that your community really respects. So take advantage of those live events. I find that the fact that they have a deadline really drives a rush of signups to your email list. All right, the third thing you wanna to do to grow your email list and really get over that 1,000 subscriber hump is to partner with your peers. You would be amazed at how many people overlook this, but this was one of the instrumental and key ways that I was able to grow my email list in the beginning. I'm pretty sure that there is someone who is about on your same level, meaning they've amassed the same level of following that you've amassed. Maybe they have been working on their business for the same time that you've been working on their business. I bet there is someone like that who already has the eyes and the ears of your audience. 
And so you wanna partner with them and do joint live events, like the second point that I talked about previously, in order to grow your email list. Too many people get so focused on going for, you know, the big name industry person, hoping that that person will send them a huge, you know, deluge of subscribers. And while that is one strategy, and I'll talk about how to do that in just a moment, I found that partnering with your peers can be highly effective. So if you are a health and fitness coach, consider partnering with a stylist or um, a makeup artist or some person who handles skincare because people who are into looking good in their clothes and fashion or are into having you know healthy glowing skin and beauty would probably also be into wellness and being healthy because all of those things impact your visual appearance. So think of someone in your industry who you would consider a peer but is either to the left or to the right of whatever it is that you do and see if you can partner with them to maybe host a live event or host a joint email challenge or something like that so that both of you can grow your list at the same time. All right, I have more tips where that came from, but first I wanna hear from you. Are you currently growing your email list in your business? Let me know in the comments below. All right, the fourth thing you wanna to do to grow your email list and get to that magic 1,000 subscriber number is to interview industry experts. So this is something that I do recommend and something that worked really well for me when I was just getting started on my business. In fact, you can look at some of the interviews that I've done in the past with industry experts, and I always made sure to offer some sort of irresistible lead magnet or irresistible giveaway or freebie during those interview sessions so that people who might not have known about me but did know about the industry expert, they were incentivized and had an opportunity to get on my email list just by participating in that live interview. Also, I really like live interviews versus just simply interviewing somebody on your podcast or somewhere else on your social media because, again, if it's a live interview, it goes back to that other tip that I mentioned, I think it was the second tip, about having live events and that it has a start time and an end time and that creates a natural sense of urgency for people to want to sign up. So if you can do some sort of live video, maybe a YouTube live or something on Zoom or some sort of webinar or something where you're interviewing an industry expert but people people know that it's only going to be for, you know, this night only at this time that really drives a lot of traffic and a lot of engagement and people will want to sign up for your email list in order to participate. All right. The fifth thing that you'll want to do in order to grow your email list and to get to that 1000 subscriber hump or milestone or whatever you want to call it is to make use of SEO. Now, most of us know that SEO stands for search engine optimization. And if you're like me, that sounds super scary. and Like, oh my goodness, that's not something that I wanna deal with. But that's not exactly the type of SEO that I'm talking about. While that type of SEO and like Google juice and all the stuff that the SEO experts talk about can be really helpful, I mean SEO in a more broad sense. So using hashtags, the correct hashtags on your Instagram is something that I deem as SEO because it is optimizing the way people are searching on Instagram. So people will often go to the explore page, they'll go in the search bar and they'll enter in various hashtags that represent the things that they're interested in. So I'm here based in Houston, Texas. Maybe they're looking for hashtag Houston hairstylist or hashtag Houston health coach, or maybe it's just someone who's looking for information nationwide and they want to know, you know, hashtag dog trainer or whatever. So people use hashtags, for instance, in order to search and find relevant information to them on Instagram. So that's an example of what I call broadly search engine optimization. So basically you just want to do things that optimize how people would be searching you and looking for you online and on the various platforms that you might find yourself on. Another example is if you host regular podcasts, make sure you're titling them in a way that people would be searching for when they're looking for that specific podcast. So again, if you're a health coach and you're somebody who helps people deal with digestive issues, think about a specific digestive issue. Maybe, um, you know, uh, everything I eat makes me bloat or, um, celiac disease or anything like that, make sure you're titling your podcast titles with the same keywords and terms and phrases that someone would be using when they're searching for that. That way, when they're looking for that inside of iTunes podcasts or Spotify podcasts or wherever they listen to their podcast, your content is gonna rise to the top. So basically you just wanna optimize any content that you have and make sure that it can be found if people are looking for people like you. So I don't know if you wanna call that social SEO or kind of broad SEO, but it doesn't have to be this weird, you know, super technical thing that you do just 
just to get traffic on Google. You really want to have an SEO mindset on every platform that you find yourself on. All right, these are just five of my tips for growing your email list to your first 1,000 subscribers. But if you want even more, I encourage you to download my Get Found Guide. My Get Found Guide gives all the suggestions, all the organic suggestions that I recommend in order to not only grow your email list, but really to grow your brand and to get more eyeballs on you, your business, and what it is that you're doing. So go ahead and get that Get Found Guide at CourtneyLSanders.com slash Get Found, all one word, and you can download it via the link below. All right, guys, I hope you really enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up, like, subscribe. And if you want even more information, make sure that you are following me both on Instagram and on my podcast. So I'm on Instagram at Courtney L. Sanders, and I give a lot of tips there daily. And I also share even more great information on my podcast called The Courtney Sanders Show, which you can access both on iTunes and Spotify. And so with that, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.